In this section of the tutorial, we're going to import the image of George Washington. We're going to go ahead and quickly examine it and create a texture component to see if the image is suitable to work with. And then we're going to go ahead and start to create our vectors ready for the modeling stage. So in Aspire, we're going to create a new file. And I'd already pre-cropped the image to be 8 by 10. So we're going to make it width 8, height 10. I'm going to set the modeling resolution to high. I'm going to leave the XY origin position in the lower left corner and hit OK. Next, we're going to go ahead and open the file from the appropriate folder, modeling a face portrait. And here you'll see there is a JPEG called George underscore Washington underscore 8x10. I'm going to hit open. And that will just be scaled to fit the part which is the same size as the image. So as we mentioned in the overview for this tutorial, one of the first things you need to do before you start a project like this, after you import the image, is to take a look at it and make sure that you can see enough detail in the image to trace all the vectors. So you want to just zoom in and take a look and make sure you can see the lines of things like the nose, the mouth, the eyes, the outline for the hair, and key parts of the clothes, and all the features of the face really, so that you know you're going to be able to use that in order to help you lay out accurate vectors. If I'm happy with that, the other quick test I ought to do before I start work on this is to create a quick texture uh, model. If we go into the 3D view, I'll make sure I have the image selected. We'll actually tile the windows vertical. Go to the Modeling tab, and we'll go ahead and click on the icon to create a component from the selected bitmap. That will automatically generate a component which has the same name as our image. I'm going to select that, right mouse click, rename, and just call that Texture. What I want to do if we maximize the 3D view is take a look at this and see that I'm going to be able to pull some useful data off it to help me later in the process. This texture, this final skin that I'm going to apply to my model is an incredibly important stage to add all the detail and fine small pieces of the model. And so what I should do with the texture typically is to take it to apply the smoothing filter to it in order to knock off some of the rough edges and the noise from the JPEG. So let's just go about halfway and take a look and make sure that I'm getting some detail and that I'll be able to use this with a fair amount of sculpting as a useful texturing tool. I'm happy with the quality of this. I can see I've got good definition in the eyebrows, around the eyes, the mouth and the hair is going to be very helpful to me and especially down here in the clothes I've really got some good detail to work with. So at this stage I should be happy that I can go ahead with this particular example and I can definitely work with it. So I'll switch off the texture component. We'll go back to the 2D view and now we want to think about drawing the vectors that we're going to use to create our model. You can see when I deselect the image that it fades a lot. So if I select it again, right mouse click, go to object properties and we'll go ahead and fade this down. And I don't want to go too far, I just want to see enough detail, so maybe around 15% so that I can still see it when it's deselected um, but so that it is a little bit faded, which will help me to see where the vectors are going. So before you start drawing the vectors, it's always useful to have taken the image, printed it out, and maybe had a look and make some decisions about how you're going to start to build the model up and where you want to draw the vectors, and maybe even let those help you decide what kind of layers you're going to use. As you'll have seen in the overview, we discussed um, how we're going to structure our layers for this particular job and as I create the vectors I'll go ahead and build those layers for myself. So the first thing I typically do when modeling a face is create some basic shapes um, just to give essentially the roundness of the head and some of the main shapes that we've got in the face such as the jaw um, and lower part of the face, the cheek and the forehead. So on the drawing tab I'm going to go to the layers and we'll create a new layer and we'll go ahead and just call this basic face shapes make it visible active hit OK hide the manager and I'm going to create an oval an ellipse and I'm just going to draw this very roughly 
the size of the head. I'm going to go into node editing by hitting N on the keyboard and then start to node edit this. And what I'm really looking for here is a vector that follows any visible outside surfaces I've got of the face. So I need to zoom in carefully here using I to insert nodes and then just moving them around. If I need to, I may have to insert extra points and just putting in enough shape to govern the main shapes of the face. Again, I would come round the chin and quite carefully you need to create these vectors, start to build these in here. Have to decide as the head comes around where I want this to go. And really some of these are quite arbitrary decisions. And then just make sure this comes out far enough in order to represent the roundness of the head everywhere that I need it overlapping into the hair. So that would be my basic head shape. And then I would go ahead and create some other shapes. Typically drawing something like an ellipse is a good starting point. And then come in here and for the forehead create a shape that's going to allow me to build that area up and I would go ahead and do something for the cheek and something further down for the lower part of the face. In this example we're not going to draw all the vectors. The vector drawing operation for a, a job like this could easily run into several hours and so I'm just going to show you some of the key things you need to be aware of when drawing the vectors and then we'll go ahead and import some vectors that are ready to start modeling. So assuming we've drawn the rest of the basic face shapes, I would now switch that layer off, create a new layer, which we'll call Detail Face Shapes. And this is, in effect, the next layer of shapes on the face. So I'm still not worried about specific things like the nose, or the eyes, or the mouth. But now I would come in and I would start to generate myself shapes for very specific um, parts, such as the bulge we've got on the chin here and again here I'm just eyeballing it with a straight polyline hit N for node editing S to smooth all those select all those nodes and hit S to smooth them so I may have a shape like that normally need to be a little bit more careful to make sure I'm accurately following what's in the image and I would go ahead and create other shapes for other um, parts of the face that are on this level as well. So here you can see we've got as part of the cheek coming around a bulge so I need to be aware of where that bulge goes and we'd go ahead and draw some vectors for that. Again zoom in and just make sure that that carefully follows the shape. I don't need to worry too much where I've got a, a smooth transition between shapes like this because that'll be done by the sculpting tools. But where I've got a harder transition of shape like I've got between uh, this part of the face and the part under the nose, then I do want to make sure the vector carefully follows that uh, shape so that I get a definite edge there and that'll help me to um, keep that proportion and shape and placement of it when I start to do the further editing. Again, I would continue for a while creating all the detail face shapes. Then I would go ahead and move on to the next layer, create a new layer, and the next layer may well be uh, something like the nose. Here again, I'm just going to use this, exactly the same tools, the polyline tool. With the nose, I like to extend the shape of the nose up and into the forehead. and then you just trace around once more I like to use the straight polyline then I select all the nodes and hit S and I just like the control that gives me over being able to go in and edit the shape edit the model and again I would take a long time over creating these vectors to make sure they were very carefully done and they followed the shapes as closely as possible the 2D silhouettes of the shapes are going to be really important to me creating an accurate representation of the face that I'm working on. From there, I would create a layer 
um, for the eyes and carefully draw in all the detail shapes around the eyes, the mouth, the ear, in this case we have a very simple ear because we can't see too much of it and I'll draw a shape for that. And then I'd go ahead and draw a shape in for the hair. So I may come back, create a layer called hair after I'd built all those other layers and just do exactly the same process. Just take my time, sketch carefully around and draw this. Now in this case I notice that the hair is, um, so this hair is over the ear here. I come down there. If I need to, I can just continue and then join these vectors afterwards. And once more, I'll just take my time going around, smooth that out, and then um, go in and node edit that to make sure it very closely followed the line. Finally, I'd come down and create a layer for the clothes and draw in all the key elements of the clothes, draw in the buttons, draw in an overall shape for the ruff that we've got in the front of the shirt here, another separate shape for the back collar, the back shoulder, and then also the um, area we've got on the back here um, where the ponytail goes through. So what I'm going to do is shortcut this now by opening an existing file we're going to open a file called uh, One Portrait Vectors, which is in the project folder. And here you can see ultimately what these vectors are going to look like. As I said before, these are a very complex set of vectors. They're extremely key to getting a good result, but it would be very, very tedious to sit and watch several hours of somebody drawing vectors in a tutorial. So hopefully with the tips I've given you and the hints, you can see that pretty much all these vectors are created simply by sketching around different areas, smoothing them within the um, node editing, and then going in carefully, moving the nodes around, adding nodes if I need them. And essentially, you should end up with a list of layers that looks something like this. We can see, if I switch those off, there's the base face shapes, there's the detail face shapes, there's the mouth, the nose, eyes, and you can see quite a lot of detail, small shapes around the eyes to get all the little folds and parts of the lid. The hair, the ear, and the clothes. Lastly, I have a layer called Silhouettes, which has got various outlines that I've created, which will be helpful to me later when I'm doing the modelling to be able to crop certain areas back. To create Silhouettes like this is very straightforward. If I switch on all the layers except the Silhouette layer, I would just grab all the vectors I'd created, right mouse click, copy to layer, or say new layer, I'll just call this test, make it active, hit OK, switch off all the layers, switch on just that test layer, and with all those vectors selected that are part within the part that I want to be part of the outline, I just click on the weld selected vectors icon, and that will give me the outline, it'll just weld all those vectors together and give me a single outline, and that's what's on the silhouette layer. In this case, I'm just going to delete that because we've seen how we would create it. We'll go ahead and switch on all the layers again and just delete that last test layer. So here we're at the stage where we're ready to start the modeling process, which will be continued on in the next tutorial. If you want to create your own vectors, they should look something like this, but you're also welcome to open the file and work from that if you want to get on with the practice stage of this. When you come to do other faces though, it shouldn't be underestimated how important a stage this vector creation is and how you have to have a very similar set of vectors to the ones I've got here that should represent all the key shapes that you can see from the image that you're looking at. You don't have to create them all up front. If you forget some, that's okay because you'll be able to create them along the way. But certainly it's worthwhile going through this process, creating the layers for all the different components and different um, sub-assemblies that you're going to work on. And that'll give you a good template to start to build your basic shapes and do your more detailed modeling. That concludes this section on creating the vectors for our portrait.